Hello there, I'm Rhino GT4, and welcome to Let's Play Dirt 4. Developed and published by Codemasters, released in June of 2017. It's Dirt 4. But wait, you're wondering, weren't you supposed to LP all the other Colin McRae Rally and Dirt games before doing this? And to which I say, yeah, but I wanted to LP this game because I want to do a new, new game on my channel for once. So, here's Dirt 4. Plus, I love this game. I, I've had an absolute blast with this game ever since I got it, so. Let's start a new game, and uh, let's get straight into the dirt, shall we? Racing in dirt is a thrill like no other. Your car flows through the turns. It's like music. You find the rhythm, and then dance with danger. On the edge of control. The adrenaline courses through your veins, but the whole world melts away until it's just you, the car, and the competition. Be fearless. Hello and welcome to Dirt 4. I'm here to help you get started on your path to becoming a driving legend. Why not tell me a bit about yourself? Why don't I just get right on that? So that's a that was a wonderful intro video there. I, I greatly enjoy that. So let me just put in my information here. I'm gonna use my real name of course, and let's use that as my driver appearance. Leaderboards, sure, multi-platform. I don't care because I'm currently, I'm going to LP this game in offline mode, so it doesn't matter. So let's confirm our details. Let's get the basics set up for you. What kind of experience are you looking for when it comes to driving the car? So those of you who don't know about Dirt 4, there are two type, types of uh, handling physics in this game. There's the gamer, which is catered more towards the casual fan, and beginners, which is a little bit easier to get into. And then there's the simulation mode which is for more hardcore fans and veterans of Dirt Rally, for instance. I'm going to go with simulation mode because I'm hardcore. Plus, I'm going to be playing the game with my wheel since I'm playing this on the PC. I have a Logitech G27, and it works goddamn well with this game. So let's put on the challenge. And we get sent straight to a loading screen for a f our first rally stage, which is actually a um, tutorial. Yeah, this game has a tutorial. In fact, this game has a large amount of tutorials, which I'll be covering in this first segment, just to get it all out of the way. Welcome to Fitzroy, Australia. This is a great place to get a taste of driving a rally car. There's no pressure to compete, but there are some talent scouts here today. You never know. Do well and it could lead to a seat with a professional team. Your co-driver and instructor for today will be Jen Horsey, one of the best in the business. Good luck. This is an M Sport prepared Ford Fiesta R2. It's front wheel drive with a sequential gearbox, and although it's got a small engine, it still packs a bunch. It's a great car to get started with. I'm gonna count you in like I would at the start of a real stage, so when you hear me say go, hit the gas and get up to speed. Alright, before we get started on that, let me just uh, go through my options and make sure everything is to my liking. So, uh, be right back. Okay, there we go. Finally got all my options set. So now I'm going to shut up while Miss Jen Horsey gives me the tutorial because she's going to be talking a lot. But I will return uh, when we get to just standard pace notes at the end. So uh, enjoy the sights and sounds of Dirt 4. 4, 3, 2, 1, go! Okay, so let's get a feel for how the car slows down. Back off the gas, and you'll see how it decelerates. Once you're done, get back up to speed. Go! 
got a corner coming up. Use your brakes this time to slow down the car and then turn into the corner smoothly. Keep going through the next set of turns. Try to get a rhythm going. To help you navigate the road ahead, you'll need to listen to my notes. We'll use the six to one system. A six is a fast and sweeping turn and a one is a slow and tight one. Right six, left five over crest. 80 through dip, 80, left five, into right four, and left three over crest. Don't cut, into right five, dip, crest. A couple of other descriptors you might hear are square, hairpin, and acute. For these corners, you may want to use the handbrake. Try it out at the junction coming up. Dip, right five, press, turn, hairpin left, bumps, 60. Great, I hope that all makes sense. I'm gonna give you root notes for the rest of the stage so that you can get a proper taste of stage rallying. 110, through dip, So yeah, um, not the best right there, but it's a tutorial, so it doesn't matter. I'll get used to this Caution, after a while. Baby, right so, five. um... This is a pretty cool tutorial for you know, the newcomers and stuff, and uh, this game is absolutely freaking beautiful and also runs very well, and the interior view is really good. Here's a uh, new feature within this game, stopping at the Marshall Post, which is really cool. Well done. And there we go, there's our tutorial stage done. No, I would not like to change anything style. Very impressive. Based on your performance, I think the pro difficulty level is right for you. But you can go ahead and change it if you want. I'm screwed pro difficulty, so we have our three, four difficulty options. Only three are unlocked, though. Fearless is locked for now. So I'm going to go with the champion difficulty choice, and I'm also going to customize it to my liking. So we have... Different AI difficulty choices, competent, challenging, demanding, and tough. We have can set how many times we can restart an event. I'm going to go with unlimited restarts because I would like to basically just, you know, win Al's first, well, not first try, but you know what I mean. Uh, we can turn on auto repairs, ABS off, off throttle braking off. I'm not sure exactly what this means, but I'm going to turn it off anyways. Automatic wiper is going to keep on. Exterior camera is going to keep on because I am going to be using exterior cameras throughout this LP. Launch control off. Stability off. Traction off. Transmission. Go with manual sequential. You also I can also use H pattern or an H pattern with clutch, but I'm going to keep it simple and use sequential because I like using my paddles. Uh, clutch override I'm going to keep on just because I'm not good using the clutch, so I'm just going to let... yeah. I know I'm like usually the totes hardcore all assist off thing, but I'm gonna keep the clutch override on just just for my sanity. I do have limits surprisingly, and time control braking, which I think might be um, as far as control to the Marshall's post. I don't know, but I'm gonna keep that off. Now we're saving and we're loading the Dirtfish area in the Dirt Academy, which is going to be the other part of this first segment before we have more tutorials to deal with here at the Dirt Academy. We're getting this all out of the way so we don't have to do anything else afterwards. Welcome to the Dirt Academy. This is a great place to practice and learn some crucial techniques. Let's start with a short drive around to get used to the car. This car has more power than the one you drove in Australia, and it's all-wheel drive too, so it should feel more capable in the corners. Alright, so yeah, here we are in the Dirt Academy. We can just free roam all we like with this car here. And I'm going to use this opportunity to show off all the different camera views. So. Of course, we have this cockpit camera, camera, which I really like, and is a very good cockpit camera. I'm going to be using this throughout the LP, but I'm also going to be alternating between that and this camera, the chase camera. As anybody who knows me, if the game has a uh, actual interior camera, I like to alternate between the chase cam and interior cameras because I really like interior camera views. So I'll be alternating between these two every like event or whatever. We have a further away chase camera. We have a bumper cam, standard issue. We have. How's the car feeling? 
If this driving style isn't quite right for you, you can change it in the options menu. Thank you, Jen. We have a dead end here, so I need to loop this thing around. And we have a dash cam, and then the interior cam. So, uh, let us stop this, and let's do some uh, lessons here. Here at the Dirt Academy. So, here's the rest of our tutorials. We have kind of a lot to go through, but let's just get started, shall we? Starting with straight line braking. <laughs> Maintain stability. Try to brake only when you're traveling in a straight line. Press the brakes hard from corner ahead, but release them before you turn in. If you've slowed down enough, you won't get too much oversteer. Sliding's fun, but it isn't always fast. Road surface and elevation changes have a huge effect on stopping distances. You need to brake much earlier for this downhill gravel turn. Small taps on the brakes should be enough for fast technical sections, but focus on straight line braking whenever possible. Straight line braking isn't always the fastest way, but it's usually the safe method. Try braking later to find your limit, and when you're ready for the next step, check out the trail braking lesson. So here we go with our straight line braking course. I just have to do one lap around the course in order to complete the lesson and move on. Doesn't matter how good or bad I do the lap. I just have to complete the lap. So this would be a good chance for me to get used to driving uh, the cars in this game through the chase cam since throughout, if, if you watched my uh, like 14 hours of streaming this game, I uh, mostly use the the uh, hood or bonnet cam, depending on where you're from, uh, and the uh, dashboard and interior views. I haven't really used this much, but when it comes to my LPs, I like to show the car. It gives, you know, you the viewer more to look at, so let's just try to get good using this camera, which should not be too difficult. So we round the final turn of our straight line brick tutorial and there we go complete the lap slower than the tutorial but I don't give a shit so let's end this lesson and move on to the next which is about weight transfer braking hard will shift the weight over the front wheel increasing grip when steering and giving you sharper turning accelerating will transfer the weight back over the rear wheels allowing you to get the power down to flow through winding sections, use gas, braking, and steering inputs to move the car's weight around. Weight transfer is less distinct on loose surfaces, so you'll need to make stronger inputs to trigger the same effects. So a quick little course here. I have to say, I really like uh, Jin's narration in this game, like over with these tutorials and also with her pace notes. She sounded, she sounded like she had a really good time, like she was really excited to uh, provide her voice for this game, which is really nice, and to the barriers I go. Overall, she, sound, she sounds like, you know, she sounds like an actual person speaking, not like a robot, which is, just it just adds that a little much more. Like, I don't mind, you know, when a co-driver sounds like a damn robot, I mean, look at Rally Sport Challenge 2, but I like the more you know, natural sounds from Jen here, so that's pretty cool. Anyways, next up, the handbrake usage tutorial. Okay, slow down for the corner ahead, turn in, and give the handbrake a quick hit to tighten the line through the corner. For tighter turns, like hairpins, hold the handbrake for slightly longer. But be careful, don't overdo it or you'll spin. Weight transfer gives you the initial turning momentum, and the handbrake locks up the rears to start a slide. The pendulum turns lesson will put this into practice. Alright, so let's get started with the, uh, probably the one thing I haven't yet, like, 
I, I have the most trouble with when it comes to playing any racing game, not just rally games, and that is the handbrake. I'm not very good at using the handbrake whatsoever. I've kind of learned a little bit how to use it in this game, although, as you see, I'm still pretty sketchy at it. But at least I'm not spinning the car literally every time I use the handbrake, so I am learning, which is nice. Because it is going to come in handy for getting that maximum of stage time, so let's hope I can use it uh, pretty effectively. And there's the handbrake tutorial. So now our final basic technique. When you get a flat tire during a rally stage, you have two options. Stop to repair it or limp the car to the end of the stage. Sometimes driving it out is your only choice, like when you don't have a spare. And it may be faster to limp it home than to spend the time making the change. When you're driving with a flat tire, the car is gonna be unstable and prone to understeer and oversteer. This can be especially problematic on two-wheel drive cars when the puncture's on a driven wheel, like when you get a rear flat on a rear-wheel drive car. When a tire goes flat, it loses its shape and it gets floppy. If you keep driving on a flat, the tire can come right off the rim or rip apart, which can lead to bigger problems. The faster you drive, the worse it is. There are a couple of signs to look out for that tell you you're driving too fast on the tire. First, you'll feel a vibration through the car that gets worse with speed. To help prolong the life of the tire, try slowing down to a speed that reduces that vibration. Second, a flat tire is noisy. That's because it's out of shape and it's rubbing in the wheel arch. Again, reducing speed can stop the noise and help keep your tire from breaking apart. So yeah, that last tutorial was just a video on how to deal with punctures, which is cool. So there's our basic techniques. Now let's go to the advanced techniques. We have four driven things and one video. So let's start with throttle control. Throttle control is super important, especially for rear wheel drive vehicles like this one. When accelerating out of tight turns, use partial throttle to limit oversteer and try to avoid mashing the gas until you've straightened out. Through long, fast corner, use as much gas as possible to keep your speed up, but back off to control slides when they happen. Once you're confident, apply more gas to find the car's limits and get faster. I've experienced through uh, this game, you know, playing it previously on stream, throttle control is pretty important for uh, real drive cars, as you will get that, that wheel spin and oversteer, so. It's definitely something to keep mindful of when you're driving, especially when driving a real drive car. Front wheel drive cars are also in need of some throttle control, because if you spin the front tires, well then you have absolutely no grip. And you can't turn the car when you have no grip. So many friggin' cones underneath my car. Some tells me I did not do this well. In fact, I definitely did not do this well. I did this horribly. That's okay. Still getting used to everything with this camera. Besides, I need pace notes, damn it. Oh well. Anyways, off to trail braking. shifts the way forward, allowing you to take the turn at speed. Learning to manage weight transfer will help you with more advanced techniques, like the pendulum turn. Trail braking can be a necessity if there's not enough time to break in a straight line. This one up. It's a lot of interesting because trail braking is another thing. It's, it's not like the handbrake in terms of I suck at it, but it is definitely a more difficult thing that is easy for me to uh, lose control. 
with. So I completely forgot what I was what was coming next. You know, I very much paid attention to the tutorial video. That was a big jump. I keep taking these turns way too quickly. I need to learn. This. I need to learn to slow the hell down before I get into the actual like meat and bones of the game, or else I'm gonna be in very big trouble. Anyways, let's check out the pendulum turn. To make a pendulum turn here, steer away from the corner, brake, and then counter steer sharply into the corner to save the gas. This throws the weight across the car, allowing a quick change of direction. Use this technique to link corners at speed. For very tight corners, you can combine a pendulum turn with a quick hit on the handbrake at the apex to tighten the line. So basically what we're doing here is the good old Scandinavian flick. Where we turn outside slightly and then throw it to the inside for a turn. Something like that. Wow, that actually went very well. Holy shit. Okay. Apparently I know how to do the Scandinavian flick with this Subaru fairly well. That's cool. Approach that turn too quickly, didn't use enough brake. It's one thing, I'm a, I'm a little cautious on the brakes just because I know I have ABS off, so don't want to lock those up. Anyways, it's time for a video about manual starts. Mastering the start is an art all in itself. In rally, it's not uncommon for drivers to be separated by a tenth of a second at the end of a stage. So a good start could be the difference between winning and losing. In Rallycross and Land Rush, a fast start is even more important. If you get out front first, you'll be clear of the rest of the cars when they hit the first corner together. Turning off the automatic starts assist gives you more control on the start. For manual starts, you need to hold the handbrake while you build up your engine revs, then release it when it's time to go. By default, the clutch works automatically, so there's usually a fraction of a second delay between the time you release the handbrake and when the clutch engages. Through experience, you're going to be able to anticipate this delay and release slightly before go time, giving you a faster start off the line. You need to be confident in your ability to anticipate though, or you're going to get a penalty for jumping the start. Enabling the manual clutch gives you total control over when you engage the clutch. With practice, this is the fastest way to start, because you're going to be able to time it exactly right but you need to be more aware of the surface you're on because each one calls for a slightly different technique. Dry gravel requires the least precision. Dumping the clutch spins the wheels, digging you into the ground where you should find traction right away. Wet conditions can be a little tricky because you might find mud under your wheels that doesn't offer much grip, so you'll want to go easier on the clutch. Tarmac requires you to feed in the clutch progressively, since the shock of dumping the clutch can damage the drivetrain. Snow also requires a different approach. Too much clutch and you'll be spinning your wheels. So allow the car to roll forward slowly to establish grip, and then feed in the clutch to gain speed and avoid wheel spin. Alright, so, yeah, um... Other than the clutch, uh, uh, yeah, manual starts, that's what I'm going to be dealing with, because like I said, I have the auto clutch, so, uh, manual transmission tutorial, here we go. On long straightaways like this, climb up through the gears to get the fastest speed possible. For long sweeping turns, downshift before you turn in. Take the next two tight turns in first, accelerating into second between them. Timing your gear changes is critical. Watch for wheel spin. Don't shift up too soon. Work your way back up the gears, shift down for the first turn, and again for the next one. When you've got better traction on a paved surface, you can move through the gears faster. Drop to second the final turn. Get 
all those gear choices, but screw it, let's do this. Manual transmission time in this little, uh, opal. Here. So yeah, uh, manual transmission, something I know how to do very well. So, it's just a matter of getting around this track. And, you know, not cocking everything up, like I am very prone to doing. Okay, that was actually quite a lot easier than I was expecting. Car is uh, pretty, pretty stable. I carry too much speed. Whoops. Rammed into that little barrier. Absolutely destroyed it and probably destroyed the front of my car. I fear to look at it though. So uh, let's just continue, shall we? As you may hear that thunder in the background. Hooray, thunderstorms. So there's the advanced driving techniques. Now let's go to the drive types, which will be focusing on the different uh, drive types of the car, starting with front wheel drive. <laughs> Basically doing the same track car combination as in the manual transmission test. So let's just do one more lap around here as we uh, get acquainted with this opal here. And I learn how to front wheel drive. Front wheel drive cars are definitely very tricky to uh, learn because, like Jin said, using the front tires for both accelerating and also steering, so you want to try your best to uh, avoid getting wheel spin on the turns, or else you're just going to be going straight, and uh, that's not good at all. Don't recommend. So let's just get around this final turn, nice and smooth, and I think I beat the tutorial lap by like 8 seconds there. Hooray. Now let's check out real drive cars. Rear wheel drive cars have a tendency to oversteer when you're on throttle, so controlling your inputs is crucial to maintaining stability. If you feel the car is understeering through tight turns, you can give it more gas to bring the back end around, but be ready to counter steer. Avoid heavy weight transfer because it can be hard to recover from a slide without totally losing momentum. Try to keep your drifts to shallow angles and carefully manage your inputs to control the amount of oversteer. Simple enough, right? It's all about that throttle management. counter steering when possible. Man, this thing is all over the place. Let's see why they chose this car for the rear wheel drive tutorials, because this thing is uh, a little bit unstable. So yeah. One thing you can do if you're really good at driving rear wheel drive cars, which apparently I'm not, is um giving it a little throttle and then counter steering to get a nice power slide through the turns which will help rotate through the turns quite a bit I 
something that's going to be very necessary for uh, when we reach a certain part of the game that I'm not going to spoil yet. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Anyways, time for the easiest cars to drive. The all-wheel drive cars. <laughs> traction at all four corners of the car, so you can approach turns at higher speeds and throw the car in more aggressively. Don't be afraid to get on throttle earlier through a corner to maximize your speed. You're more likely to face understeer than oversteer because your front wheels are driven. So think about weight transfer when you throw the car into a corner and manage your gas and brake to control the angle. I'll say these are some pretty nice and in-depth uh, lessons here. I've never actually like did all this in Dirt Academy because mostly because I don't need it. I know how to rally. These are some really nice and in-depth tutorials for those who want slash need it. So yeah, all-wheel drive cars. They are the easiest to drive, but they may also be some of the hardest to master because you can be super aggressive with these things. It's just a matter of getting that perfect amount of aggression with these cars without overdoing it and sliding off the road into whatever hazard happens to be off-road at that particular place. Oh my goodness. That was a pretty good run. Except for that penultimate turn, that was a pretty good run. So there's the drive type tutorials down. Now next we have the disciplines, which is a bunch of uh, text tutorials, which basically shows you all the rules of rallying, and all of its stuff. If you'd like to read all this, you can pause this video at your leisure, or read it at, at your leisure, but I already know how all this works, so I'm just gonna give a little bit of time just so you can have plenty of time to pause, and then we shall uh, move on. Overheating. Trust me, we're gonna be uh, seeing a lot of the same uh, of a certain amount type of uh, damage report in rallying, especially if I uh, have issues with staying on the road. Of course, we got our rally cross rules, including the Joker lap. The Joker lap is fun. I like the Joker lap; it's really cool. Joker Delta is a really cool addition to this game that was not in Dirt Rally. And it's, uh, it's really nice. It helps with your strategy. And then finally there's a land rush mode. Which is quite an adventure, let me tell you. It's also a hell of a lot of fun once you figure it out. The, uh, the difficult part is actually figuring it out, though. So we have two sections left. We have surfaces and conditions. So let's go to that and get started. Oh my god. <laughs> Surfaces, the car is going to change direction slower and slide more before regaining traction. Just your racing line to compensate for condition. To regain traction when the car is sliding, try to balance the throttle to limit wheel spin and regain traction on a loose surface. When you're sideways, you can adjust your slip angle with the gas and the brakes. So let's get loosey goosey with this Subaru around here. I'm gonna have these. I'm gonna have these uh, tutorial tracks down by the time this is all over. I think I've driven around every single track so far at least once. Dirt Academy is pretty cool. We're gonna be doing more stuff here. And by Dirt Academy, I mean this. Uh, the Dirt Fish place is pretty cool. We're gonna be doing more stuff here. 
uh, eventually in this LP, but not for a while. But this is a cool place. You can just go here at any point and just kind of drive around and have a grand old time. And you know, I like it. I like it. It's cool for just dicking around. Anyway, it's time for hard surfaces. Oh. <laughs> to break traction on a paved surface compared to a loose one. Try to push as hard as you can using smooth, sweeping racing lines to maintain speed through the turn. A little bit of tire squeal is a good sign that you're pushing the car to with limits, but if you feel the wheels starting to slide, try to ease off. Keep a smooth line. Sometimes you can make up time by skipping over the apex, but watch what's under your wheels. Obstacles like curbs can unsettle the car. A quick jab of the handbrake can break traction and help get you around tight hairpins. I'd say probably my, my uh, most favorite surface to drive on in this game, Tarmac, because uh, it is so grippy and easy to drive around, but it's not my favorite because it's easy, it's just my favorite because it's just a lot of fun to drive around. Tarmac tracks, because you do have that grip. You can just kind of chuck, <clears throat> chuck the car everywhere, especially if you're in an all-wheel drive car. Like that first attempt at saying chuck, it's like What the fuck is wrong with me? I don't even know. This is a pretty interesting spot. Nature is kind of taking over in this little section of the uh, dirtfish area here. And then we have our final hairpin. So a quick tap the handbrake. Try not to hit the tires. Oh, glanced it with my left rear. There we go. Across the line in 47 seconds. Now let's move on to the mixed surface tutorial. <laughs> It's a rallycross car. So yeah, rallycross is returned from Dirt Rally. And uh, this game has the, uh, I believe it has the full FIA World Rallycross license. Which is really neat. Because it had like a partial rallycross license in Dirt Rally, only having three of the venues. From the World Rallycross, but I think this game has all the venues. So, uh, it's gonna be fun. See, not the best at Rallycross, but, you know, it's only up from here. And over the jump, across the line, there we go. Alright, now we got a couple videos to watch, and we'll be uh, moving on to our final tutorial section. Snow stages are exclusive to Sweden and present a unique challenge. Your car is automatically fitted with studded snow tires, so it's going to feel like you're on gravel. You're going to encounter a mix of snow surfaces and a variety of grip levels, but the distribution of the grip tends to be more uniform across the width of the road than you'll find with gravel. A typical snow surface features a layer of snow over ice, gravel, or tarmac. Your tires are going to naturally sink into the snow, making a big roost behind the car. A buildup of snow against the side of the tire gives you some resistance to slides and the illusion of a grippier surface. That resistance will subtly slow your forward motion, too. You'll also find patches of compacted snow, a much harder surface the tire doesn't sink into. It's going to feel like it has less grip, but it's actually faster. 
when you hit slushy snow, you'll see the color of the underlying road surface showing through the racing line. Grip's going to be inconsistent across the road as you transition between slush and snow, so your best bet is to stick to the worn tracks whenever you can. Built up along the side of the road are the famous Swedish snowbanks. You gotta watch out, because they'll grab the car if you hit them too hard, and that'll be the end of your rally. But you can use them, too. If you drag the tail of your car through them, they'll help keep you straight on corner exits. Careful, though. There's a fine line between brushing the bank and digging in, which makes this one of the most advanced snow driving techniques you can master. And let me tell you, I have not mastered that snow bank technique. Anyways, about uh, the weather. Throughout your career, weather is going to play a huge part in your successes and your failures. You'll experience sun, rain, mist, fog, and snow, all with varying degrees of intensity. The characteristics of the track service are going to change from stage to stage, and sprawling vistas suddenly change from beautiful scenery to deadly sheer drops hidden behind a thick layer of fog. Each condition demands your respect and requires a different approach to driving. Sunny conditions give you the best visibility of the track ahead, and if it hasn't rained recently, the surface will also be dry. In rally, push hard when it's sunny and dry to make up for time lost in wet conditions or to gain an advantage if the weather changes. In rally cross and land rush, visibility can actually be worse due to the dust and debris kicked up from dry loose surfaces. Try different lines to avoid getting lost in your opponent's dust. Wet conditions reduce grip levels and depending on how heavy it's raining can impact visibility. In Rally, put your faith in your co-driver in low visibility conditions and adjust your attack to compensate for the reduced grip. In Rally Cross and Land Rush, visibility will be better on loose surfaces, but settled water on pavement is going to cause a lot of spray. Fog is only a consideration in Rally. When it occurs, it can severely reduce your visibility and it'll test the trust between you and your co-driver. Keep an eye out for any obstacles beyond your co-driver's control, like stranded cars, and consider taking it slightly easier in these conditions if you can. Snow is exclusive to Sweden, and it's one of the most challenging surfaces you can drive. Your car is going to be surprisingly capable in its snow setup, but the snow banks and overplow at the side of the road can be punishing if you get offline. Managing wheel spin with careful throttle control is key to maintaining traction. If snow is falling as you drive, visibility can be a challenge, so consider when to push and when to play it safe. Oh boy, is that fog an adventure. That's all you really have to say about that. Driving a night stage can be one of the toughest challenges in rally. With corners and obstacles obscured by darkness until the lights pick them up at the last second, you need to put your complete trust in your co-driver to continue to post fast stage times. Supporting your main headlights, an additional light pod is attached to your car for night stages. This casts a far stronger beam, adding a lot of illumination to the road ahead. It's important you don't damage your lights during the stage, otherwise you'll find yourself in pitch black in the middle of nowhere. If there's no service area before a night stage, be careful where you put the front of the car. Any serious damage could also prevent the light pod from working when it's attached. If you do have damaged lights when you get to the service area, check the event details to determine if there's a night stage coming up. If there is, your lights can be repaired by fixing the body lights component in the service area. Your crew chief will also prioritize your lights if you ask him for his recommendations. Yeah, night driving is also quite the adventure. Anyways, we have just two more tutorials to deal with and one more video. So uh let's uh let's deal with jumps, shall we? To negotiate corners that come immediately after jumps, you need to make sure you're at the right speed before takeoff. So I'm heading straight toward the jump. I'm watching my speed. And I'm making sure I can land in the right place to take the corner without hitting the red markers. We 
be flying, you know? Now, unfortunately with this game, the uh, probably most famous rally course known for jumps, Finland, which was in Dirt Rally, is sadly absent from this game, but that doesn't mean there aren't any jumps in this game in rally stages. We, we still have those to deal with, just not as insane, just not as an in, insane an amount. So. Alright, I, I think a com game compensates well for the lack of Finland. And there we go, jump tutorial done. Not very well, because I went very wide at the turn, but whatever. Anyways, our last driven tutorial, water splashes. <laughs> When you drive into water at speed, or on an angle, you'll feel resistance against the car that affects your trajectory. Try to adjust your racing line and anticipate your speed. Watch out that you don't hit the water too hard, or it could really tear up your car. Water splashes are quite the interesting thing, because I, like, I always, like, underestimate how much speed it actually scrubs off your car. It, it scrubs quite a lot of speed. Either that or I'm just entering the splashes way too aggressively. I don't know, but let's deal, let's just, uh, move around this water splash here. Nice and smooth. Trust me, any other water splash I have to deal with is not going to be nearly that smooth, but hey, it's good to get your feet wet, uh, slowly. And there we go. That's the Water Splash tutorial. So now we have one final video to watch, and this segment shall be will be finally over. Camber is an important factor. There are two types of road camber, positive and negative. Positive camber is when the road is sloped toward the inside of the corner. It can be used like banking through the corner for higher cornering speeds. Negative camber is when the road surface is sloped away from the inside of the corner. This naturally tries to force the car away from the apex, pushing you wide, so you want to use lower speeds. Your co-driver will warn you with an off-camber call. In isolation, camber or off-camber corners are pretty easy to deal with, but when they're combined in a sequence of turns, it can be tricky, especially when you're on a road with crown in the middle, and you get both types together. Be careful, because if you get on the wrong side of it, the car can become unstable. Good car positioning is the key to getting the most out of each type of camper. And there we go. So yeah, there's all the tutorials done. The Dirt Academy has been completed, so... It looks like you're really getting the hang of this now. When you're ready to move on, just exit through the Dirt Academy hub. You can always return later to practice, test cars, and try more lessons. So yeah. That'll, uh, that'll conclude this segment, so I'm just going to dick around for a moment. And, um, yeah, I will end it here. So next time on Dirt 4, we'll get thrown to the main menu, and we will begin this game proper. Man, this was a long tutorial sequence. Like, holy crap. So, uh, till then, stay tuned for more Dirt 4. You're not going to want to miss this, because this game is fantastic. <laughs>